Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now talking about the IGP's retirement and replacement. He, well, his tenure expired Monday, uh, February 1st, 2021. And there's been this, you know, bone of contention over whether he should, his stay in office should be extended for another six months, like some stakeholders are calling for, or if he should leave the post for another person who, you know, some would say a younger person, people with fresher ideas, to take office. And the issue has been so dicey because the presidency uh, has said, people have said that, you know, insecurity still persists in his regime, in his tenure as the police IG, while others are saying, you know, no, he should be in power. But we'll take a look at a report here by a Plus TV Africa correspondent, Jacinta Obioko, and we'll return to join our guest, a security risk management expert, Kabir Adamu. It is reported that a coalition of youths and students' organizations have tried to justify the reason why they want IGP Adamu reappointed for another tenure, which, according to them, is based on his achievements while in office. Now, part of the story is making headlines is the position of the pan Yoruba Social Cultural Group, Afeni Ferry, who says the president should allow the Inspector General of Police to go upon his retirement on Monday. According to a security expert, the police boss has outlived his relevance. Since IGT has been able to bring the police force together, he has been able to uh, contend with the political space, he has been able to contend with the environmental space. I think his work is a professional, uh, good department, and uh, also I think he also has a respect for uh, the rule of law based on his uh, international uh, uh, international exposure. Uh, for me, uh, his uh, relevance uh, is not a, an avenue or a, a, a platform for his tenure to be extended. This is also the angle of a legal practitioner, Malaki Ugumadu, who explains the legal implication of the extension. The country is a country of over 250, uh, of over 200 million persons, no less the number that is in the Nigerian police force, within which we can always fall back on that human resource to deal with the leadership of the Nigerian police force. So I don't think the uncertainty is necessary. I don't think we need it at this material time, considering the state of the security in the country generally, the tenure of the Inspector General of Police specifically is a question of law. And once it's a question of law, it means there is certainty. And once there is certainty, there should not be any ambivalence. However, his outstanding response during the NSAS protest is not ignored. If you look at the NSAS, you will realize that uh, he responded to the call of the Nigerians to disband SARS, but he went on the other way to activate SWAT. I will want a new coming IGP to also trade on that part. The immediate past heads of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps and the Nigerian Correctional Service also got tenure extensions beyond their retirement ages. As at the time of filing this report, the president was yet to announce a replacement or his retention. Jacinta Ubiuku for Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much, Asinta, for that report. We now have security risk assessment uh, management expert uh, Kabir Adamu joining us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning, um, Anika. All right. So, first of all, do you think the replacement or sack of the service chiefs has any role to play in the agitations, you know, for the replacement of the IGP? Um, no, not, not, not at all. The, even though all agencies are within the security architecture, they are frankly of a very different nature. And um, the fact that they are guided by different laws, um, in my contention, is that there, that means, for instance, there is no relationship in terms of whether extension or you know, retain, retention. However, it's very important to note that they are all serving the same administration. And if the style of the administration is to allow this type of ambiguity, then perhaps 
that's where the relationship lies. But as far as the law is concerned, they are guided by different laws. Um, in the case of the IGP, it's by the Police Act 2020. And um, it's very clear in that act what uh, is it, it, expected as that, well, yesterday, uh, February 1st. All right. Um, recently, there was um, an extension of the tenure of the Comptroller General of, of uh, Immigration, um, Mohamed Babandide, and of course, uh, also the um, NSCDC uh, uh, Commandant General. Um, I think his name is um, uh, Mohamed Ghana. Um, the president extended their, their tenures. Is, is there a possibility in any way that uh, the IGF police might also get, you know, similar uh, extension? Um, in my mind, that, that extension has already happened, even if it's not been formally announced. Uh, the fact that by law, uh, yesterday should have been his last day. And I mean, as far as we know, he had a meeting yesterday. He issued an official directive uh, severally, um, even as late as 6 p.m. yesterday. Uh, I saw an official pronouncement by, by you know, um, IGP Mohamed Ad Adamu. So that extension, frankly, has happened, uh, even if there is no formal uh, statement to back, back that. So, um, I mean, the lawyers can interpret that. Um, but for us non-lawyers, it appears the extension has already happened. What we're, what we're waiting for perhaps is, uh, you know, an official clarification in terms of, you know, an, uh, a release by the presidency stating, for instance, whether the extension will be for a few days or for a longer period or, as the case may be, a replacement. But the reality is that um, as at yesterday, uh, if he didn't go and he's still in office as at today, then the extension has happened. O okay, uh, Mr. Adamo, what are the issues at stake here if, you know, his tenor for being, you know, in that position has elapsed, but it seems like you've said there's an unofficial extension that, that is happening at the moment. What are the issues at stake? Um, so the reality is that in the Nigerian context, um, if a lot of things um, happen, and this, this perhaps is the consequence of our constitution. Um, the, uh, the police council, which perhaps should have the responsibility for uh, either prompting or deciding these things, as far as I know, has not met. And so the implication for one is you have this constitutional uh, vulnerability, if I'll call it that, and um, the onus really is on, uh, especially the civil society organizations, uh, human rights activists, and constitutional lawyers to actually test um, this gray area that, that we're in, or, or else would create a precedent in our national history that may come back to haunt us in, in the future. We've seen, like you, you know, attempted to do co uh, correlate this development with the service chiefs. They, they as well, there was an extension formal for up to two years. Um, and then you've cited the examples of other uh, departments within the security uh, subsector. Now, those ones were formal. In this instance, um, as of now, it's not formal. So it's, it's a bit difficult to mention. But um, if we do want this to be clarified, I think uh, someone somewhere needs to take this up. Uh, and then it will help enrich our democracy uh, going forward. If the courts, for instance, decide that this is what the law says, especially if they interpret the um, Police Act 2020, and say clearly, this is the responsibility of um, the president, the responsibility of the, pol uh, the police, um, National Police Council. Um, as far as legal impl implication is concerned, and the lawyers you know, can confirm or uh, discuss this, my worry for the IGP is if it makes a, a, um, uh, an official function or a declaration in this kind of circumstance, and it is challenged in court, then perhaps, unfortunately, it may be in futility because if he doesn't have the mandate to act uh, until that pronouncement is made by the presidency order for extension or replacement, then the likelihood that someone can challenge his action or his authority within this period in court is very, very high. 
And like I said, it's the function of our national uh, culture, our national, you know, experiences. We don't sometimes take these things up formally. We talk about it, but nobody bothers to, you know, take it up formally. Right. And like I mentioned earlier on, perhaps the civil society organizations um, would should help us, the um, constitutional lawyers should help us in this regard. Well, but well, the well, risk is that his uh, authority may be mentioned in yeah. this period. Uh, Kabir Adamo, I, I, I'm, I'm also guessing that, well, I'm, I don't know if you would agree that we don't always need to get to a state where we are now calling for civil society groups and for lawyers to step in. You know, things normally should be done the way they should be done. Um, you mentioned the police uh, uh, council earlier. Um, so I, I want you to quickly speak on what should be the process of selecting a new IG. Um, this process should probably have kicked off, you know, months ago or weeks ago, seeing that his... Um, um, retirement, you know, uh, date was come, was approaching. And do you think maybe that should be adjusted? Should we have a different way of selecting a new IG? There's people who maybe, you know, um, are currently um, um, qualified to take over that position. Uh, so do you think we should, you know, adjust or make adjustments to the process of selecting a new IG with the way it seems now? As far as I understand the process, um, I, I don't think it needs any uh, tinkering. Uh, the, pol the police um, uh, council, uh, perhaps with the nudging of the police service commission, uh, and as far as I know, even though this is yet to be confirmed, uh, it appears some suggestions uh, were made. Uh, the police service commission, uh, through the, the police council, did, did submit names to the presidency. Uh, I don't know the date, but it appeared it, it, that happened in the last few weeks, months. But then the presidency um, asked that those names should be broadened, uh, maybe because say, a certain individual that the presidency was, expect, was expecting was not included in, in, in the list that was submitted to it. So it's not a lack of process. No, uh, the process is clear. And it appears those that have the responsibility to, you know, um, carry out that process actually did their work. But the presidency, for some reasons, um, you know, tarried and asked them to broaden it. Now, whether they did broaden it and resubmit the names, we are not, we are not sure. Uh, but the bottom line is that this is a responsibility that should have been decided by the president a long time ago. Um, we do have enough problems in our national existence. The polity is beset by so many issues at the moment that this needless uh, controversy should have been av avoided. Um, if at the early stages, succession is very important in any organization, especially for the police. And um, frankly, the, this decision should have been made much, much, much more earlier so that the succession would have been seamless and would have avoided the kind of situation we're in at the moment. Uh, like I said earlier on, there, there are consequences. We do not know whether uh, someone somewhere would take up uh, you know, this challenge, uh, or if uh, our recent history is anything to go by, then we may just sort of juggle through this and nothing would happen. But the processes are clear. It appears an attempt has been made to comply with these processes. But then, unfortunately, um, the highest decision maker, which is the presidency, um, did not uh, carry out his own responsibility, which is, it, it, is their, it is their proven point. And so even if um, the board is under it, the Police Service Commission, the National um, you know, uh, Police Con Council, uh, if they do their work, if the presidency does not um, you know, endorse or carry out his own responsibility, then we'll be where we are at the moment. All right, Mr. Adamu, the Police Act uh, 2020 says that uh, uh, this is section 18, subsection 8 that I'm reading now of the new act. It says every police officer shall on recruitment or appointment to serve in the Nigerian police force uh, shall serve for 35 years or until the age of 60 years, whichever is earlier. He's completed 35 years on service and is clocking 60 September 17th. And now you're saying that it seems that, you know, the presidency might extend in this tunnel. Also, presidential spokesman Gaba who says he has no idea when the presidency might make any declaration about this. So if, you know, things stand the way it is and, you know, his tenure is extended in contravention of the Police Act, would this then be yet another situation where those in power actually break the law? 
Um, don't forget that the FAME Act also provides for a five-year tenure for the IGP. And um, uh, like I said, these are issues that lawyers can interpret. Um, it's, it goes beyond, beyond my you know, professional call it to interpret that, but I know that there is a part of the Police Act that says the tenure of the IG should be five years. So which supersedes which? Is the, I, is the appointment of the IG, um, you know, uh, over and above uh, his um, obligations as far as an employee of the Nigeria Police Force? If it is, uh, would that uh, requirement or that, that window that says his appointment can be for up to five years, will the, will the presidency exercise that? So again, these are questions or uh, issues that lawyers would need to clarify. Mm. But um, suffice to say that, uh, and, and just to clarify, I did not um, say that his appointment has been extended. I'm only interpreting the reality. Mm -hmm. The reality is that he's still in office beyond the days that um, the law allowed him to stay, which is February 1st. And so that's the reality. Uh, if, he, if he acts today, which is February 2nd, then it, it, in reality, it means it's been extended, even if it's not been formally announced. That's my position. Well, let, let, I have not made any judgment in terms of whether I'm recommending his extension yes. or I'm recommending his replacement. I'm merely interpreting the reality. And All so right. um, it's less it's really mean. for... Uh, the presidency, as it were, to take a decision on this, and that can be also be questioned or, inter or well, subjected to uh, the, the, the... Remember when a democracy and the consequence of a democracy is that you have three arms of government that are being checked by the other. So where the executive, which is what we are discussing at the moment, everything we are discussing is in the realm of the executive. It is, this is the time for the judiciary to actually come up and exercise its function. But before it can do that, Somebody needs to take this matter right. to the judiciary. I, I, want, I want to bring in, you know, another angle entirely now um, that, you know, seems to be very sensitive, you know, in the, in the times that we are in Nigeria today. Um, there is numerous groups from reports that are lobbying uh, to have their own, you know, favorite uh, uh, candidates take over that position. Uh, Moaneza is also making statements about, you know, the next IG being from the Southeast. Um, so I want you to quickly speak on how sensitive this is um, that um, concerning the tribe of whoever it is that takes over that position, if there is no extension, and how can you know these angles be handled better? Um, there's also, of course, the the part where there's interest groups that want their favorite person to you know be appointed. You know what could be the the particular interests. So it's the reality of Nigeria of today, unfortunately. Uh, this reality speaks uh, to the fact that um, we kind of interpret things. Sometimes our cognitive biases you know, are so uh, embedded in us that we interpret and judge or recommend uh, actions or processes on the basis of those cognitive biases and then these cognitive biases sometimes are extended to ethnic and even religious um, sentiments and um, yes uh, there is a need due, due to our disparate nature to balance uh, these expectations um, and one of the key elements that have permeated this administration is the accusation of nepotism and that accusation i think is highest in the security subsector uh, there, there has been this uh, you know, allegation that the majority of the appointments within the security subsector are from one particular ethnic or geographical group. And so um, any time there is a vacancy of, in, within the security subsector, uh, of course, uh, those that are you know, making this kind of demands would insist that perhaps a, you know, a, a balance is, is achieved where uh, they recommend that other ethnic groups or sometimes even religion are brought in to balance that. Now, yes, uh, beyond this uh, sentiment that I've mentioned, the reality is this: we are different. Sometimes we want someone that we can relate to to be represented in certain subsectors. And so where government that is trying to balance this, our disparate nature, wants to succeed then it's very important that I think an attempt is made right. to balance our disparate nature. Um, the world currently 
is projecting diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so if these three major principles that personally I believe in, as much as possible, as much as our culture would allow the embedment of these three principles, if we're going to join the world in terms of embracing right, diversity, Mr. equity, and inclusion, then we should make an effort to balance that. And that includes, for instance, even um, groups like women should be represented. I have looked Abs at the entire community yes. subsector, the leadership does not have a woman representation. All right, Kabir, so we should go beyond this. Ethnicity. Yeah, ap apologies. Balance, um, yes. I, I love the angle and the direction that you were taking, you know, the conversation to. But um, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, and I totally agree that we should see a, a female IGP um, uh, pretty soon. I don't know how likely it is, but I hope that we do. Thank you very much, Kabira Damu. Always interesting hearing your perspectives on the on the program. Breakfast. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And thank you. Have, have a nice day and stay safe. You, you too. too. You too. Oh, sorry, Yogoa. This conversation, to be honest, I wish we had enough time to dig into this because really I was going to raise the angle he was talking about. There is the, you know, concept of fragile character where everybody should be represented. You know, that's like vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, diversity, inclusion, gender balance and all of that. But I, I agree with that, definitely. But we also have to consider the fact that it should be merit and competence over gender Absolutely. or over... Anyone, I mean, anybody can... It, if you can do the job, it doesn't matter if you're from the north, if you're from the south, let the person do the job. Absolutely. You shouldn't say you're employing somebody just because you're from the southeast. What if the person is incompetent uh, to but do uh, what needs who to be done risen, to secure Anyone the who has risen to you know, the level of a DIG or an AIG, I'm sure, should be capable regardless of where you're from. Hopefully. Um, hopefully. But you know, that's, these are all angles that we hope that the presidency would consider you know, for the next appointment of the next IGP. So right. thank you very much for staying tuned on this segment. Our next guest is waiting for us to delve into the issue of Sunday Iboho and his latest invasion into Ogun State.